welcome to Space Vidcast for July 3rd, 2009. Happy Independence Day for all of you in America. This is Space Vidcast. We are the Space Vidcasters. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. This is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. And happy Canada Day to and our happy Canadian, Canadian friends Day. that happened earlier this week. And is there like a Mexico Day or anything else? Oh, well, uh, yeah. Happy whatever, whatever you're in day to wherever you are to, you know, whatever. You know, there are, <laughs> we're, we're changing a few things around. Yes. And we're doing that because we got a lot of comments on the Space Vidcast website. And yes. you guys gave us a lot of feedback. I would call it constructive criticism, but most of the people who gave feedback were not constructive. We actually did reply with constructive criticism and then they never replied back. But we do appreciate your constructive <laughs> criticism on spacevidcast.com. And a couple of people said that we need to do more news items, shorter things. And we, we were having this great Twitter fest. Mm -hmm. So certainly, if, if you don't like an aspect of the show or you do like an aspect of the show and you want to get your voice heard, we absolutely listen to you. We're going to we try. We listen. We listen to all of them. I may cry in a corner after your <laughs> email. We softly. But uh, we, do, we do read all of that and try to respond as responsibly as possible. Always trying to make the show better, so we're going to try some new things tonight and make it happen. And on that news, let's go ahead and get started with some space news. Space news. This first item is awesome. This is this is why I wanted to start the show with this. Yes. And that is that Guinness as in the beer company yes. wants you to go to space. Well, they want a person to go to space. Well? Which is kind of funny, because they're like, oh, we got this really great thing, blah, blah, blah. One of you can go to space. And how does... And you can't bring friends. <laughs> but one of you can win going uh, like underwater, and you can bring friends, and another one of you gets like a concert or something, and you can bring friends. And yeah, no, going to space, not so much. Guinness has reserved a seat aboard, aboard, aboard Virgin Galactic, so you will be able to win a ticket by buying... How does this work? You have to actually register online, I believe it is. Yes. You have to be 21 years of age No, no, no. Older. You have to be legal drinking age legal drinking in whatever age. country you're in. There you go. Or from. So, you know... 21-ish here in the United States. Exactly. And on that note, since Crow River Coffee Company happens to serve Guinness, we have got Caffeinated, who is going to serve us some Guinness live on the show. So for the first oh, show... this is hysterical. Lean in, lean in a little, oh, bit, more. little bit more. Yeah, he's like way over here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> so we've got, hang on, we've, we've got, got Guinness. two bottles of Guinness Where that we're going we? to open there up in an attempt to win. I don't know if a purchase is necessary. Oh, we'll get to that later. Uh, but there's a story behind the shots. We'll get to that later. Uh, I don't know that you have to buy, do you have to buy a bottle of Guinness? No, you actually, you don't have to purchase. You do have to be of legal drinking age and you then you have to submit your name online. I believe you only have to do it once. Uh, go to Guinness.com for that, of course. And uh, they have a huge flash site, so just be patient with them. All right, but it's right there on the front page. Let's make these things go. <laughs> Yeah, you like. We're you supposed can't to be more. We're supposed to be shorter horrible. and more succinct, and I think we're we making are. things longer with uh, this particular. Yes. Yeah. There, there you go. There you go. I love the arms that are just appearing out of the. <laughs> this is very not CNN. You know, I. Oh God, <laughs> I was like waiting for that to go over. I love Guinness actually. All Guinness right. Is, yeah, that's, <laughs> there's something just beautiful about Guinness uh, as well. You know, it's this kind is of, it's, it's kind of appropriate. Thank you, that. Roswell Witness. Absolutely. Ooh, sorry about your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Napkins at the ready. Yay! All right, so here's your Guinness. Here's my Guinness, and we are here toasting. Not yet. Nope, not yet. We'll do that. We'll do that in the second part after the thing. The uh, thing with uh, the stuff see? and the other stuff. Here's toasting Virgin Galactic <laughs> and Guinness for giving you someone, hopefully a space vidcaster, a free seat into space. Uh, a little heady still. Mm. Oh, I can chew it. Anyhow, it's dinner. And your beer. It is. Uh, they're doing it. Some people were saying, well, why are they doing this? It's the 250th year that Guinness has been in production. Wow. 250. It's a lot longer than we've actually been in space. Uh, it's a lot longer than a lot of things, quite <laughs> frankly. Uh, so that, that's what's going on with that, and that's why they're doing it. And I'm glad that they've hooked up with Virgin Galactic. I think that'll be very, very cool. And uh, should happen... Should it happen to be that any one of our space vidcasters goes into space, 
you gotta you, you need to bring a camera or something. <laughs> something. I mean, we, we gotta get a, in on that. I so mean, how really. can I how can I register? Do I just go to Guinness.com? Yep, Guinness.com. Like I said, it's a huge flash site, but it should be right there on the beginning after you put in your date and time and social security number and <laughs> personal phone number and dog's name. I'm not really sure, but all of that other information uh, so that they can make sure that you are, you know, who you are. JAXA Ames to move to space-based solar power. First, the Japanese start talking about getting away of monetary systems, and now yes. they're talking about beaming power from space. Yes, JAXA. Yes. Uh, the Japanese aeros that, 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 that thing right there. So, there space, space solar power. Yeah, that's, that's a one, you know, one thing of it. The hope is to commercialize orbital solar power by 2030. So that's 2030. not too bad. Three zero. That's yeah, not bad. No, no, it's only first, like 20 years away. Right, I thought it or, was like 2015, and I was like, they're crazy. They're crazy over there. It's just not going to happen. Um, <laughs> then thought that the graphic was still up. I'm not drinking during the show. Yes. So Japan, for those of you who are confused by the JAXA thing, in Tokyo, Japan, that's what they're looking for. They're looking towards space-based solar power uh, by 2030. Uh, my understanding is that they want to get all of Japan off, running off of space-based solar power, which is really, really cool. And just as an aside, I had heard recently that Japan also wanted to do away with money. Right. So we, we were joking and saying that they're trying to become Starfleet, essentially. You know, very, very green, very, very just open-ended, getting aware of money as well. I was going to make a really bad joke, and I'm not going to. Well, so right. just... If, as an aside, though, I don't think space-based solar power, I don't think the technology is ready. That's my understanding. So right. whether they want to do it now, maybe that's why it's 2030, but whether right. they want to do it now or not. The government is going to be launching small satellites t around 2015 to conduct uh, experiments to kind of ah. see this, that, or the other, see how it goes. Ulysses is dead. Yeah, all right. So I got yelled about this. It, it, Ulysses isn't dead, all right? It's dead-ish. It's dead-ish, exactly. Uh, she was running out of power, running out of juice. It, it was going to happen eventually, et cetera, et cetera. So they said, all right, honey, you do what you do best. And they sent her off into space. <laughs> Ulysses is has been running for what, like eighteen years? Yes, and has been circling the the moon. Jeez, the other <laughs> the, the other, other, other large body, the sun, has been circling the sun and yes. getting. It's the only vehicle or the first vehicle to get shots of the poles of our sun, mm -hmm. and it's it's been what's studying our sun for the last eighteen years, mm -hmm. looking at solar flares, solar panels, looking at <laughs> solar flares. Actual solar flares, not the solar flares on the ISS. I hate you all. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so <laughs> they, they sent her out into space. So I think that's really cool. Uh, you know, hopefully, I guess it's kind of a hopefully. Hopefully she'll hit, uh, I forget what it is, the Jovian moon, and uh, she'll get off a new course into deep space. Awesome. And, you know, maybe we'll get a ping one day. Ping! <laughs> they want Yay, me to drink, Sputnik. They want me to drink more. Of course they do. Drinking more. Yeah. <laughs> The most powerful band in the world. Are they really the most powerful band in the world? Okay. You guys know of the band U2, which correlates with Guinness as far as I'm concerned. The band U2. How do they correlate with Guinness? Irish. Is this, is, is this whole, Irish. Oh, full circle? We're going full circle here. Hello? Wow. Anyhow, U2, yes, yeah. U2. We all know that U2 is huge. And as far as I'm concerned, they are the most powerful band in the world because they called the International Space Station we in the middle of one of their tour, like, tour dates. They just started a new world tour, and they were in, uh, I think it was Berlin, but I could be wrong. Wouldn't it be awesome if, if ISS was, like, on Skype? Now, I know there's yeah. no, no actual bandwidth they have to upload and stuff, but wouldn't that be cool? Bono, that, that's exactly what I'm saying, you guys. I mean, they're sitting there, they were playing some songs, and they're like, hey, by the way, <laughs> 40 years, man, stepped on the moon, and right now we're going to call the ISS. <laughs> and I nearly peed my pants. I was like, what do you mean you're just going to call the ISS? And you 2s like, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> and they call the ISS, <laughs> and ISS answered. That was the best part. Check it out. Here's some footage. This is awesome. Houston, this is Houston. This is Bono with you too. How do you hear me? Bono, nice to hear you again. Uh, we hear you quite square here on the station. Commander of Catalonia, that is one serious cool hairdo. Is that the whole crew of the International Space Station up there? Well. This is 
Isn't that awesome? <laughs> this is the coolest thing. Yeah. But that big, huge white square that you really couldn't see, that was the International Space Station. So obviously we didn't get to, a chance to really see, see what it. they it were seeing. See, a white blob in our video. As but you, you get the all idea. know, if you've seen any footage of the guys floating around the ISS, you know, their hair is all over the place. And that's kind of what Bono was referring to. Um, hysterical, as far as I was concerned. And uh, yeah, I, I just... That just amazes me. The only people I've ever seen to call the ISS are NASA, you know, NASA hookups, or something like Colbert. The, or blah, blah. the media. I mean, the right? It's only a media normal. thing. So for you two to just be like, I'm gonna call the ISS now, I was like, what? Well, I think well, one of the reasons why <laughs> I found that interesting is that they're in front of a ginormous audience. <laughs> And for people who are probably not normally all that like space, you know, because because a lot of people have lost that that. You know what? We should have you two on Space Vidcast. We should. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they would answer our call though. I don't think they I don't, would. I think, they, I think they'd be like, who? <laughs> but think of how many people maybe were like, wow, actually. That's kind of cool. Well, and yeah. And started just a little bit, just started to rekindle that fire in them. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Hopefully. And uh, I don't know if they're going to continue to call the ISS when they make a new stop, because like mm. I said, it's a world tour. That would be cool. I know, right? Because it'd be like, uh, we're in Berlin. Can you see us now? Everybody waves. You know, it's something like that. Was that where were they? Were they? I, it's something with a B. I keep saying mm. Berlin. It probably wasn't Berlin Boston? at all. Boston? No, it wasn't Boston. Uh, Carbon, it, it is, is on, on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, Jinx. <laughs> we'll post that in the show notes if I remember, and then I will promptly forget, and then someone will watch this at on demand, and then be like, "That's not in the show notes." It's gonna be great. <laughs> you know, actually, I always hate it. Barcelona. I'm gonna take it aside. Thank you, Barcelona. Barcelona. I get it aside. I always hate it when people in podcasts and vidcasts are like, "We'll put that in the show notes." Well, why don't you just tell us up front? I, I have no idea what the YouTube URL is, but search for YouTube ISS, and I think you'll find it on YouTube. Yeah, pretty much. I searched for YouTube calls the ISS, and it pretty much came right up. So I, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, and all the YouTube URLs are like K exclamation point R Q nine at you know. I mean, they're mm -hmm. all crap anyway. So we'll get to that later. How you really feel? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. LRO, which the Lunacon. Lunacon. <laughs> <laughs> we should be drinking more. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. LRO. Mm. <laughs> Feels like space. Tastes like space, too. Is it as dark as space? <laughs> Anyhow, our <laughs> LRO has recently close. sent yeah. back. Yeah, we're not on right now. No, I know, but what look, are you at, drunk? look at No, I'm trying to show you the color. Yeah, look, I got it. Okay, anyhow, so LRO has recently sent back some pictures of the moon, and they're incredible. And if you go to Bad Astronomer's website, uh, you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, and you feel like you're right there. It's really, really amazing. The pictures are, like, this big, but it's, you can, like, keep zooming in on them. What? In space, no one can hear you slur. Thank God for that. Thanks, Blair. Ah, use your words. Words, words. Ben. Um, <laughs> so that's really cool. It's some of the most high-quality pictures that we've gotten, uh, especially from U.S., Satellites, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times because Jaxo was up there and did the high def like Earthrise movies, which are right, which stunningly awesome. beautiful, and you can get on Blu-ray by the way. Search, I think Amazon. You can. Oh no, you can't find it on Amazon. Uh, search a past show. We've got the link for it there. Yes. Don't search for our show notes because we know that's not going to happen. Yeah, apparently. Goodness gracious. Uh, as far as I know, David, they have not shown any Apollo stuff yet, but I believe that is sort of like on their checklist of things to do before they impact. Impact. Bam! Actually, we've got a while. We've got a long while before impact. We've got several months. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, they uh, have. Like they can go year, around right? and yeah. around. That's yeah, kind of around. A, around yeah. and got a, got a long time. <laughs> got a long time. Uh, you know, the, this is <laughs> this is abbreviated in in the show notes as NKOTB. Yeah, and which is funny for those of you who you know follow pop culture in any way, shape, or form, or grew up in the '80s like I did. NKOTB means something very specific to you. Ben, however, <laughs> no clue. I'm, I'm like, nerd. new kids on the block. Thanks, and he's like, thanks, UBS. And? Yep. And I'm like, well, NASA just selected new astronauts for future space exploration. Now, my so they're the new kids on the block. These are the astronauts that are selected for, my understanding is there's, these are the people selected for walking on the moon type. Uh, that was my understanding, and I'm sure Blair is probably Blair. Actually, if NASA could or NASA Edge could clarify that a little bit, because here's where I'm confused, and here's why I'm not totally understanding this story. Okay. I, and you would think that I would figure this out before we go on air, but you know, hey, that's what we do. <laughs> uh, there's like 50% of the astronaut corps hasn't even been into space yet, is my understanding. So why are we bringing on nine new astronauts when you've got uh, just a ton more sitting? Well, because they're dying off in in <laughs> in packs. Well, I don't know. 
Well, no, I, I, just, I <laughs> yeah. feel like we've got uh, just a ton of people already. Why yeah, do we need nine more? However, don't you think that we should be continuing to say, hey, we have new astronauts. Hey, we have new astronauts. Hey, we have new... Because that's kind of a... It sounds like I it's a big deal. I think all the things like NASA should be saying, hey, we have new astronauts, is the last of them. I think they should be working more towards, hey, here's how you can get to space. I, well, yeah, but NASA's not going to do that. not going to do that, I know, but, you know, I've, that's just... That's wow. just my thought process. Uh, but there were 3,500 applicants who... People who applied for this, and they selected nine. <laughs> so, hey... Go them, right? I mean, yep. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. So that's very cool. What else? It did, wait, hang on. Oh, but go did, on. did NASA, now, the co host, can you, clar can you clarify? Are these nine specific for Constellation? And are they going to be the first people to step foot on the moon again? Are they going to be the first ones back? Or is this just the astronaut corps needed nine new people and they're bringing in nine new people and the existing astronauts will be the first ones to go back to the moon and on to Mars? Uh, I, I, that's, that's where I'm a little bit. You know, I was reading up on this, and, and I just I didn't I, I didn't understand that part of it. It wasn't mm -hmm. made clear to me. I don't know. Beats me. Yeah, Blair. Blair, you have to have <laughs> all of our answers. You work for NASA, which means, oh, you see, he doesn't think they're designated for Constellation, which okay. means they may not be the first ones back to the moon. It's just adding nine more to the astronaut corps, of which 50% still haven't flown. So good job, NASA. All right. <clears throat> Moving right along. Okay to go. <laughs> yes. Okay to go. For those of you who've seen Contact, that's what Ben is currently talking okay about. Okay to go. They have cleared STS-127 for launch. Thank God. And that will be July 11th, no earlier than July 11th yes. at 6-something. It's in the calendar of events that will be coming up shortly. 6-something yeah. at night, uh, Eastern Time. And that's no, going to be awesome. 7-something at night. So, you're right. Night. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. 7-something at night, Eastern Time. 6.39 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We've Thank been drinking. Probably. Can't blame us. Yeah, and I'm in Central Time Zone, which is why I did that, that little spiel thing. Uh, obviously, Space Vidcast is going to have high-definition coverage of STS-127 and its mission back to the International Space Station, mm -hmm. finishing up the Kibo module, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be awesome. I believe we are, and I could be mistaken, but I believe we are the only online website, as opposed to offline website, that has high-definition coverage in real time, faster than even NASA. It's pretty cool. You get the chat room. It's, I would say launch events are just a ton of fun bagged up. It, you, there's some, if you can't be there in person, obviously be there in person first. Always be there in person first. But if you can't be there in person, being in the Space Vidcast chat room, watching it on your high definition television is about as close is as good as you're gonna get. You know, if you can't do that, certainly get, you know, HDNet, CNN, Fox, all of them, well, I, I don't know which of them will be covering it, but many of them usually cover it. Definitely watch it live. There's something about watching the Space Shuttle launch live that is just amazing and awesome. Too much fun. It's fun to watch. I believe Ron pointed out uh, it's, it's the sort of porch to the ISS is what they're bringing up. It's the mm. external... Uh, it, no, it really is because part of it's not pressurized. So it's like you gotta... Sorry, I got a little excited there. Apparently! Woo! <laughs> oh, there it is! <laughs> Got it. All right. Anyway. So this is the third time. For those of you who joined us before, even if it scrubs and even if they don't launch, it's just awesome to be in the chat room and, and experience the whole thing. It is. It's tons of fun. It is. Especially tons, with us. Tons of, we got to get a shirt that says tons of fun. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going there. <laughs> I'm just not going to. You so, know, one thing that's... Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was, was going to move on. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing that's not in our news story here is the Atlantis situation. Orbital Vehicle 104. Yes. And Atlantis, for those of you who don't know, Atlantis had like a $5, uh, what was it? It was a, it was a knob, knob to a lamp. Knob to a lamp that was stuck like in between the windshield and, and the dashboard by the odometer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just <laughs> go on. Uh-oh. It was stuck on the shutter. Shutter. <laughs> oh, man. I'm thinking we should cut the brake. Apparently. <laughs> It was it was stuck. <laughs> it was, it was stuck. push it was pushing into the windscreen, and that's very 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 bad. And in space, it gets up to 14.1, 14.2. Carbon, help me out. 14 point something psi. Mm -hmm. And as such, and you know, with the heat and the cooling, the heat and the cooling, the whole thing can expand and contract. It is designed to do that. Right. Well, it expanded. This knob got stuck in there, and then it contracted, <laughs> and it started just like just ripping into the windscreen. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Why are you laughing? So so sorry. Go on. No, what's so funny? <laughs> it's, drink more, and then <laughs> it's just bad. So I just all right. Finish anyway. the story. Oh. <laughs> 
they tried a lot, a lot of things, and this is the point that this is the point. This is the part that I think is really funny. They were like, "Oh, well, what we did was we tried to expand it again, and we tried to shrink this, and we put dry ice on there." And I'm thinking they packed the whole front thing with dry ice. Mm-hmm. You see, like this little teeny tiny little hand, because you know the orbiter's mm-hmm. gigantic, with like these teeny tiny little tweezers <laughs> and this teeny tiny little piece of dry ice, like barely touching <laughs> the knob. And I'm like. Didn't dry really hard. What is that going to do? I mean, honestly. And it pretty much got down to the point where they did brute force. They Mm -hmm. finally got the okay to just try and shove it freaking out of there. And and they got it. Now, we were talking with some of the space vidcasters and some of our behind-the-scenes contacts. And where this got interesting is because it's pushing up against the windscreen. Mm -hmm. And because Atlantis really wasn't supposed to be flying this long, there have been low rumblings. Mm -hmm. Like off-handed comments, not anything necessarily very serious. Right. If they're not able to fix the windscreen or they're not c- confident in the windscreen, mm-hmm. th- this is unverified, don't take this for anything, this is just me talking out the side of my mouth. A- there have been rumblings of a possibility of retiring Atlantis early. Yes. That's a big deal. The reason that would be a big deal is because if they retire Atlantis, mm-hmm. the system is designed for no fewer than three orbiters. That's the, that's the rotation system that they have. Right. If they lose one of the orbiters, uh, it's going to take months and months and months to run the next, the, f- between shuttle missions. Yes. Well, the shuttle program is dying in 2010. It's, that's its cutoff date. Just because you lose an orbiter doesn't extend that cutoff date. Right. So we could have an incomplete International Space Station. Yep. Is that all you're going to add to that? <laughs> what else is there to add to it? I I don't want to... Uh, that's that's what's out there. I I I don't want to I don't want to add to it too much to to make it sound like it's it's totally legit. Like we know we've got some sort of insider information because we don't. It's not, and we don't. But you know, just throwing that out there, and then when it act, if that actually does come to pass, we'll be like, you heard it here first. Breaking news, Mr. Right. Gas. Right. But until then, exactly. You know, I, I don't want people to think that that's. You know, something I'm trying to set the expectations straight up front. But, you know, th- this is a serious, serious issue with the windscreen. They've got a problem in com- uh, pressurizing it on the ground. They can't bring it up to full pressure here on the ground. Right. They, they, can get, they can't even get it close to what they need to get it Basically, to. Basically, what, what's going on is that uh, they, na- they now have to test it to make sure that everything is going to be cool and what have you, and there's no way to test it. Essentially. So the only way to test it is to fly it up. And you don't want to fly it up if it ain't going to do okay. So it, it's kind of a scary situation all the way around. And, um, it, you know, it's designed to have three orbiters because, God forbid, something should happen with the next launch, whatever the next launch is, and they have to use one more orbiter to be a LON, mm-hmm. you know. And then you only have, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're pretty much down to, like, two orbiters at that point. It's just... Uh, it gets iffy and it gets creepy and crazy and crappy. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to be talking about NASA employees sabotaging the shuttle. Now, here's a quick hint. No, they don't sabotage the shuttle. We'll be right back. Hello, and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, mm-hmm. Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks.
as such, we have... Now I have audio? Now you have audio. Well, I'm going to have to give you hell for that, aren't I? Yeah, but go on. <laughs> we do the show good. live every week at Crow River Coffee Company, and Adam, the uh, what would you be, the owner of Crow River Coffee, just <laughs> muted my microphone. Thanks for that. I can't decide if I'm going to do a coffee of the month now or not. Oh, mm. sad. How's that going to go? Oh, sad. How's that going to happen? Uh, so the, uh, the coffee of the month is an espresso blend, and there's a very good reason for that. Because we wanted to drink Guinness every single time we have the show for this month. Adam came. Adam found an interesting drink combination, which is you take Guinness mm -hmm. and you take a shot of the uh, the espresso. And what I just pour this whole shot in here is that what I do? Yeah, it's a it's like a Guinness macchiato. So I take this. I wouldn't drop it. I would just pour it. This one I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so I'm going to pour that in like so. And apparently, that's mm -hmm. still hot coffee. <laughs> that's supposed to be pretty good. It's delicious. Go ahead. It's, it's delicious. I've never tried this. I didn't put it in mine, just in that. case it, it doesn't go. Yeah. It's interesting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. It's actually kind of cool. I like that. So anyhow, the espresso blend, you can get that. So get your Guinness, get a trip on Virgin Galactic, get your espresso blend, your espresso coffee, and then you can be like drunk awake during launches. <laughs> it's awesome. CrowRiverCoffee.com espresso blend is the coffee of the month, and you're Contributions there help keep us going here. Especially with the Blast Off blend. See, look at that. Nice graphic. Yes, that's awesome. Wait, that says Blast Off blend. No, no, no it, it says doesn't. espresso. Sorry, I can only see the I blend said at it. the end. Woo! All right. It, yes? Sabotage. NASA. Mm -hmm. There's talk and rumors. I will say really quickly that I, I forever try to find the BC Boy Sabotage, like the one frame in their video where it just says, Sabotage! Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. There have been MSNBC stories and major news articles that have been talking about potential sabotage mm -hmm. by NASA employees. And mm -hmm. this is kind of a bit of a stretch. And the reason that this is a stretch is that it's just not going to happen. For first off, the employees are very dedicated. Talk, yeah, but you're talking, be specific. We're not just talking about like regular good old sabotage. We're talking very specifically the GUP connection on Endeavor for STS-127. Well, that's one of the things. But they're also talking about future, they're worried about future sabotage as well. Right, but this is where, this is where it came up. This was the first time that they really started, where the rumblings came in, yep. if that makes any sense. Yep, and part of of the reason that this is just complete and total nonsense. It's almost like, uh, I would have to call it bad journalism on the part of MSNBC and any of the other major journalists that are airing these stories. It is, it's uh, scare tactics and it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. And here's why it doesn't make sense. Not only are the, the employees very dedicated to their job, you know, they could still say, well, someone's going to, it just takes one, right? Right. The problem is everything's redundant. Yes. It's not NASA employees necessarily that are doing all of the launch mechanism stuff. Right. It's United Launch Alliance. Right. So that's actually the contractor that's probably still going to be working on Constellation and other things. Yeah, so no matter not, what. Uh, I'm not sure that they're that worried. Some of them may lose their job. But even so, there's still other ULA members right there mm -hmm. and NASA employees and mm -hmm. entire checklists. Mm -hmm. So it's checked by multiple people from multiple companies every single Item right. is checked by multiple people yep. along the way. And it's there's yep. just I don't want to say there's no way, but man. Pretty much the and this is where I think crazy media people, you know, I, I kinda have to thank them to a certain extent because, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity mm -hmm. is the idea. Right. So as long as space is in the minds of the people, yep. that's a good thing. However, this kind of came about because, like I said, of the, the GUP connection. Mm -hmm. The fueling issue that we had on STS, was it 119? Mm -hmm. We had it on STS 119. We had it again, and it was almost the exact same thing, or was the exact same thing, on STS 127. And uh, so they're thinking, like, well, that means that somebody, you know, took the knife and shot it in the tire again. And that's not, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, there's no, reason for them to be to do something like this even if they're even if somebody was doing that like you said there's so much redundancy in it mm -hmm. that it, it it's got to still be cool it's got to still be okay right. what's going on with uh the gup issue the, this particular fueling issue is that it, the seal has to be perfect and they didn't perfect they not didn't, like not like like microscopically perfect. Right. And, and they, it's not like they made like 3,000 of these seals, you know, like on a, on a old 
jar of mm -hmm. jam kind of thing. They didn't just make extras just to kind of have them and make sure that we had got extras and you know hand them out to kids as souvenirs or anything like that. They only made so many. We only have so many, and we're reusing parts at this point. Yep. And so they're not going to be perfect. It's just not. It's going to be as perfect as we can get it, but. That, if that's not good enough, if that makes any sense. So that's that. You know, I, we just wanted to touch on that. As you hear these stories, for all intents and purposes, just ignore them. I, I think they're, they're just journalists not doing their job, in my humble opinion. It's, it's companies firing their science and, and space and science teams and not having any idea what they're talking about at that point. Yep. And it's too bad that the likes of Miles O'Brien didn't have an opportunity to stop them from airing such stories. It, it actually, I, 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 I think, is a little bit of a disgrace. But... But, That's you know, for all we know, it's going to get lots of airtime and everyone's going to love it and they're totally going to grab onto it and then they're going to complain because we're bombing the moon and we didn't ask her. <laughs> Something like that. You know? You know, before we go today, a couple of additional changes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the Space Vidcast community is getting quite large. Yes. And as such, whenever we have a launch event, we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people just in the chat room. Yes. Let alone watching the live stream. Yes. And we need help. And we're going to be holding elections for Space Vidcast moderators. And the terms of these elections and how all of this is going to work out will be posted uh, on our website, probably in a blog entry, so you can kind of know what's going on. But we're going to create a, a group of people who can get elected, become moderators, mm -hmm. help us out in the Space Vidcast chat room, and you can serve your term. And then when that's done, you get a new group of people elected and help out. It's it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to, it, it's it's neat that this is necessary now, that we've grown to the point where it we is. have to hold elections for people to help us moderate the chat room and make sure that appropriate things are going on. And, and the other reason we want to do this is because up until now, we really haven't had a whole lot of moderators. We can't moderate when we're doing live stuff. And we want to make sure that the content in the chat room itself is appropriate. Mm -hmm. And we want to, we, you know, we've got kids that watch this show. And we, we Sometimes this can get a little bit out of, out of control. So we need people to kind of, rein it back in and we just want to make sure that the show the chat room in the show is always maintained at a, at a good level and one of the other things that we've been criticized about is that we are not serious enough we're not you know we don't go deep enough into the stories and, and stuff like that and well our, no, we, that's just it we get both criticisms right one of them was you go too deep and you spend too much time on stuff and the other one is you don't go deep enough and we're like uh, right like within 24 hours of each other right but my point is that we try to make this information available to anyone and everyone and that includes kids and so we don't want a lot of crap being you know put up on the screen of course now I said crap but besides that um, yeah exactly um, you know we don't need them reading all of that stuff there's really no need for that and uh, it doesn't really matter we just want to keep it so it's available to anyone and everyone who wants to see it you know so that we the last launch that we had, we had kindergartners watching, we had preschoolers watching, we had, you know, third graders watching, and they can read. I know they can read. Yep. And so there's there's just no reason for it. There's no need for it. And, you know, we're all adults here for the most part, and, and we should be treating each other with respect. And it, that goes for the chat room. In addition, we've got a member of the space community who is essentially leaving the space community. Rev Rev, who is in the chat room right now, which yes. is lagged by al apparently almost three minutes, yes. which is impressive. So everything awesome. we say, they are hearing three minutes later, which is why the chat room is, we should almost- It's like we're on Mars. It's like, well, it's like we're on Mars. This is what the Space Vidcast <laughs> show is going to be like when we're on the moon yes. on Mars. You guys just get used to this right here, right now. Uh, we wanted to, to wish Rev Rev a, a fond farewell, as it were, from the space community. Not that he won't ever be back in the, in the room. Oh, but, he'll be back. But- um, He'll be back. When space Vidcast was first starting out quite a while ago, and Rev Rev, there were two people who really helped us get our start. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, what's Mike's uh, Twitter name? Uh, William, sorry, William. What's <laughs> William's Twitter name? At Paul Morantz. He's Pomerantz. W. Paul Morantz in the chat room right now. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> Will Paul Morantz. <laughs> Jeez. There were two people. Yeah, I t you tell I like him. There were two people who really helped us get start, <laughs> uh, started. Paul Morantz and Rev Rev, both of whom are in the room right now. And Rev Rev is it has several passions and one of them is music yes and he has got a fantastic opportunity and will be leaving the google lunar x prize team and moving into a career in music i think it's music marketing isn't it is yeah the, and if you hit iamfaster.com i believe it's dot com uh that's his blog and he's got this really great post and there's a cool picture of like a spaceship yeah. rocket and then like a guitar and it goes rocket rock it 
<laughs> and I thought that that was really cute. So we just wanted to wish Rev Rev all the best in the future because uh, without both Pomerantz and Rev Rev, uh, I'm not sure we'd be where we're at today. And you guys are absolutely awesome. And, and Rev thank Rev, thank you for believing in us. Thank you, and we're going to miss you. And it was uh, it was awesome having you on the Google Winner X Prize team. And <laughs> that's as two you guys I'm going to get. Now, as an aside, now that we've done the the sappy part of that, there's a second side to that, and that is. Space, the space community, mm -hmm. is a good old boys club. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you know this, but it really is a good old boys club. And while we try to fight that, it's still there. It is what it is. Since RevRev Rev is leaving the space community, we are required to shun him. Yep. So uh, we're going to end the show with, uh, I'm sorry, RevRev, Rev, but uh, you are hereby shunned. <laughs>